afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to a brand new week right here on Afternoon Express. I'm Danilo Aquisto. And I'm Bonnie Mbouli. It's a fresh week mm -hmm. and happy leap year day. Indeed, yeah. it's such an exciting one. 29th right. day, so extra day. I was actually looking forward to having another Sunday this month, but that's life. <laughs> Later on in the show, though, we'll be sharing some of your interesting and fun leap year stories. And if you haven't shared yours yet, go over to our Facebook page and please share it during the show. Indeed. And if you've been following the news of late, you would have noticed that the entire country's attention was on that national budget speed that happened not too long ago. Today on the show, we're going to be having a look at what that means for you and I. And I know it might sound incredibly boring. People are going like, oh, no, wait, change the channel. Don't. Really because there's important. so many important things in that budget speech that we need to unpack today. We've got two experts in the loft so yeah, stay tuned for that yeah yeah somebody else who looks like a budget speech is genie <laughs> <laughs> well from a budget speech to an oscar acceptance speech kim kardashian wanted to break the internet but today leonardo dicaprio made it explode <laughs> congratulations leo for winning that oscar i'm in the kitchen today with my darling clem and uh, i guess it's looking like the end of the month did we not get a good budget speech um, <laughs> The influence of the budget has made its way into the kitchen. Okay. So this week, we're tackling budget meals. Okay, I, I think it's going to be awesome. I think that's an amazing idea. Let me tell you, this got me through university. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that. So what are we making? Two minute noodles? We're making a type of pimped out two minute noodles, but it's the best two minute noodles I guarantee you have ever had. Seriously? Seriously. Okay, I actually genuinely do love this stuff. So I'm looking forward to cooking with you today. And you can too. All you need to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and cook along with us today. Get all the ingredients that you'll need, because I'm pretty sure you're going to have all of this in your kitchen as, as it is and of course we'll have all of the recipes there as well exactly. so it's all happening today on afternoon express right now though danilo is on the couch with our very first guest indeed let's leap into our first interview last wednesday the minister of finance made his yearly budget speech in parliament in a year where south africa sits on the border of being downgraded to junk status and with the rand in a very weak state this was probably the most stressful and pressure-full speech the minister ever had to make in his life joining us to unpack the national budget speech is economist kanti Pai. uh Kranti, thanks so much for joining us in the loft by the way it's, it's an honor to have you because <laughs> i've been to be dying here. to have this conversation about this budget speech why should should we as a public care? Do we even know what the heck numbers he's throwing out there? Why does it matter to us? Look, I mean, it matters, and I think a lot of uh, times people say that, you know, this is too far away from me, but these are things mm. that affect our lives every day. Um, and we also don't want to be ignorant about things that are happening in our country. You know yeah. what I mean? You want to understand what's going on. You always, And it's actually put out in a way that's very simple for people to actually understand, you know, Ooh. broken down, um, if people actually did pay attention. But really, these things do affect our lives, whether they talk about taxes. Mm. If you work, you will actually have something to do about tax. They talk about uh, petrol price things that really do affect our daily lives. Totally. So let's unpack some of those because, I mean, I did ma manage to catch it and I, there were parts I didn't really understand what this means in the greater scheme of things or, or, or not. Um, let's first begin with those taxes. I think that was a big one that was brought up. Um, and particularly on the high income earners, what exactly were the sort of tax uh, um, sort of changes that he's hoping to make? So he did two things, right? He said the low income earners um, will pay slightly less tax. Mm -hmm. And what he was trying to do there is to sort of insulate us from inflation. So guys like me who ha hardly earn anything. So he now is you know, inflation has gone up, so he thought, give a little bit of a tax break so that people sort of are left unchanged. And then okay. the high income earners will pay a little bit more, you know, that whole Robin Hood um, scenario in which yeah. the rich people actually have to try. I mean, we live in an unequal society. Yeah. So what we are trying to do is to say, look, the people who earn a little bit more ought to sort of give a little more. And yeah. that's what it did. He increased that slightly. So if we're in a financial crisis and we're struggling with our economy as a whole, won't that just chase all the high income earners out, all the big business owners who have their money in the country? Aren't they just going to want to leave? Look, where would they go, right? I mean, in South Africa, we pay some of the lowest taxes in the world, try and go to Australia uh. and to see how people actually pay. So no, it's not that bad. And also they take that into consideration. So mm. they would actually, you know, marginally adjust to make sure that we're yeah. keeping ahead, but certainly not to the level where people feel like yeah. they have to run away. So this is a big thumbs up I think we give to the budget speech because, I mean, everyone was worried about the fact that, you know, if it comes to vehicles, etc., the middle class is going to have to pay and they're the ones struggling the most quite sure. a lot. Um, and so to see the high income owners being taxed slightly more was something that we are really approved of. But sugar came up as one of the new taxes, which I found fascinating. Does that not affect then all the low income earners? 
It does, but I think one of the things that this budget was trying to do, um, because remember, budget is the law, so they're trying to say we are sensitive to all sorts of things that are happening in society. So one of the things I talked about was, for example, pollution, right? Yeah. So what you want to do is to tax tires and you know um, fumes, and then they were saying on sugar, we need to talk about health. Mm. Uh, the Minister of Health has been going on about we need to cut down on sugar, we need to cut down on salt. Yeah. And one of the things he's trying to push it here is to say, if you won't stop on your own, I'm going to tax you away from uh, consuming Jeez. sugar. But so that's part of what they're trying to do. How Healthy living is expensive. Does this not affect my pocket as somebody who's not earning as much money? Sure. I mean, it does in some sense, right? But I mean, we could do better in terms of sugar. Remember, it has um, much more bigger implications because mm. because of sugar, we have to pay slightly more in terms of the money we allocate to health services mm. uh, and hospital services. So in one way, they're trying to save on health by actually sure. forcing us to be a little bit healthier. Cool. So that's an interesting way to incentivize healthy living. Absolutely. And recently, obviously, in our country, we're speaking a bit about the sort of fuel levies and the way that the sort of, uh, sort of systems are put in place to tax people who drive on the roads. Um, that was now shifted to the attention towards fuel levies, which affects those who do buy fuel. Let's talk more about that. Sure. I mean, look, this is a tax that goes up year Every in, year, year mm. out, and that is sort of to be expected. Mm. But part of it is that it's so much easier to collect, right? You collect it at one place, you get to the garage, whether you're a taxi driver, whether you're a normal person driving your car, you will pay it, and mm. it's easy, and it goes directly to the fiscus, and it's easy for them. So I suppose it's one way to just get money easy. Of course, mm. like, you know, same thing with alcohol, right? Wasn't that Collecting the whole reason the why they wanted toll systems to be put <laughs> up in the country, to try and tax them in a different way, so those who were actually only driving the vehicles sure. were struggling? Why is there now an added extra tax on fuel? That's interesting. I mean, part of the fuel tax right, is to cover various things. Obviously, we have to fix our roads. We have to make sure that we've got enough. It's difficult to actually take it elsewhere, right? We don't want to tax yeah. people who don't have cars, who don't use yeah. transport yeah. as much. So it's easier to do that, and it's a national tax. Sure. Uh, the tolling system is slightly different, right, because of the fact that tolls should only apply where people are actually driving. So yes, the, the roads are much better mm. in Gauteng, perhaps, than they might be in the Eastern Cape. So mm. why must you tax people who have bad roads exactly. or good roads they're not even driving on? Totally. One thing we have to unpack, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot here, but obviously the education system in the country and the government is at the moment putting a lot of emphasis saying we've spent a lot of money in education, we continue to make it our sure. priority. Have they made it their priority in the budget? They have, but I think the priorities are a bit wrong here. So one of the things that we spend a lot of our money uh, financing basic education, and we're not getting great results coming out mm. of there. I mean, 25% of the budget goes to all education system, both sure. uh, basics, so about 240 billion going into that space. But we know, you know, the metric results are continuing not to be that impressive, mm. and we have these problems in higher education where universities still feel. They have to spend a lot more money trying to close the gap mm. between basic education and higher education. We should be spending much more money on higher education, given that we are at that level where we are trying to fix even yeah. the solutions around issues of basic education. What? But that didn't come out very clearly. As so far as so was concerned. there no reasoning for why that isn't happening yet, especially seeing as it's in the spotlight at the moment? I would have expected a little bit more emphasis placed on that. Absolutely. And I think one of the things to say is that we don't need more money there. We need results. So we're giving you 25% of the budget. Why aren't we getting the right kinds of results? Yeah. We can't keep plowing in more money to a problem that seems actually not to sort itself yeah. out. Sure. Interesting. So it's about skills development as well as it is about budgeting. Absolutely. Teachers, teacher yeah. training, and also making sure that people are accountable. Totally. One of the the things that have been coming out is, you know, are the teachers actually doing what they should be doing yeah. on time at school and all these things that are particularly not about money but mm. about, you know, culture and mm. making sure that the principles are right and that we're getting mm. the results. So money, is, uh, we keep throwing money at the problem yeah. and that's Shouldn't. really not there. So and what about health and wellness? I mean, are we especially seeing our, our poverty rate in increasing even, it's not really doing much of the, the decline and we need to see that starting to change recently. Are, are these new grants being in included into the budget? Are they sort of yeah, those sort yeah. of systems put so in the, place. So the grant system here is a bit of a problem in that we are actually, it's growing and growing and growing and growing, and it's not turning the corner. Part of the whole grant system and social system is that hopefully over time we have less and less people on the grant system instead of it over a 20 year period continuing to grow. It means yeah. that we're not breaking the cycle of mm -hmm. poverty. Um, so that is probably one of the biggest problems. So what we need to do is to find a way of spending money in such a way that we break the cycle mm. rather than to include more. I think now we have about 17 million South Africans on the grant system. Sure. It's an enormous amount. Mm. Of money to it's putting a huge burden on the economy. Mm. Sure. But it is important that we need to spend this money in the right sort of places, education and on that Absolutely. sort of alleviate, alleviating Elevated. poverty. And social services, uh, yeah. making sure that you know people are getting the right kind of attention. As yeah. you said, healthy kinds of living. Exactly. Um, making sure we've got social workers that can pull people out of mm. you know bad mindsets and those sure. kinds of things. There's a lot to unpack and you're going to stay on the show with us today, so I don't want to get through too much of the detail now. Sure. A lot of people's heads must be spinning already from all that information. <laughs> so he's back in the couch a little bit later on. Uh, we're going to be making the ultimate version of Two Minute Noodles after the break. 
and we continue our conversation right here on the couch. So remember to head over to Facebook and to post your questions or comments to our experts or tweet us, Afternoon Chat, using that hashtag Afternoon Express. We could be reading your tweets and Facebook messages live on air. Don't go anywhere. Experience the world in a way less limited. Apply today at dinersclub.co.za. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. So today we are unpacking the budget speech and also uncovering what for me is really almost like a swear word, the word budget. It even comes out quite aggressively, <laughs> don't you mean? <laughs> and it feels so weird oh. doing this. I apologize to my parents who spent so much money on sending me to chef school and I'm making two minute noodles. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, mom and dad. Sorry. But you know, I think this is quite a an educational mission we're on at the moment. Definitely. Because so often people think good food has to be expensive. Yeah. Sometimes, yes, but you know what? If you want to create a delicious dish, be smart about how you cook and what you use to cook. Yeah. And, I mean, we're using two-minute noodles, and it's going to taste good. <laughs> Do you want to hear something completely disgusting? Oh, on my earth, this is what I ate at university. Two-minute noodles mixed with... Um, that, that concentrated tomato paste okay. and cheese sprinkled on it. Oh, it's delicious. You know, but that's nothing. <laughs> I've heard so even more like horrendous combinations really? with two-minute noodles. People making two-minute noodle sandwiches. Ooh, uh, I've d don't knock it till you've okay. tried it. This stuff's try. addictive. So okay, actually, today. let's get... Um, Starting immediately. So we got, I know, Am I, I just, making you nervous? It's just, I can't believe we're doing two minute noodles today on the show. It's just like, I know. But you know, it's going to be amazing. Okay, what do you need me to so do? Let's, let's make it. Water's boiling. Let's get the two minute noodles in mm -hmm. there. And, um, oh, and you are doing it so well because you're using more than one bag. And also, <laughs> I was thinking, okay, should we use the microwave? But I was like, no, 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 no. Let's step it up. Let's step it up. So, into the Big boiling grill. water. Okay. And don't throw the seasoning away. Besides the fact I love got, that stuff. I know. I <laughs> saw <laughs> people like eat it. Just straight. Yeah, <laughs> addictive. So that goes okay. in there as well. And then we're getting a little fancy. A little fancy. Mm -hmm. It still falls within our budget. Some sriracha or you any chili that. sauce that you have. Mm -hmm. That goes in there and it changes the color of it already, making it look like more of a broth. Yeah. And my favorite sesame, sesame oil. seed oil. <laughs> How amazing. Okay, so oh, lovely. it might seem a bit expensive, but that's all you need for four people. That oh, was like perfect. half a teaspoon. So, and this lasts for like six months in the fridge. Okay. You'll use it forever. So while that's going, it's very important that we pay attention to the rest of our ingredients because I cannot just serve two-minute noodles. Oh, I'm ready to eat it just like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got spring onions. Now, the greens normally get thrown away like I just did right now. <laughs> but what we're going to do today is we're going to add Always a Always include garnish. your greens. So, okay. We take the stalks, keep them, how long is that? I don't know. Okay. okay. Keep them nice and long, and then carefully run the knife down and keeping the length. And once you get what, comfortable with your knife and slicing, do it again, and the thinner you go. What Can I attempt that? Okay, let's do it. Okay, then what's going to happen with this? We're going to pop that in ice water, and yeah. what's going to happen, they're going to start curling. Oh, they're okay, so, so presentation, presentation, presentation. But instead of using normal onions, which would be overpowering in this dish, the spring yeah. onions adds a subtle oniony flavor. Look, I actually got quite a thin one here for you. Look at that! Oh, oh yes. look at that, you even found a way to like, no, not cheat, you found a way to, I did not even know that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Mom, oh, you see, goodness. you didn't have to send me to chef school. <laughs> <laughs> so, which, the, we just saved this ingredient from going to the bin, because normally that's what happens. Yeah. The greens go to the bin. Also, yeah. as soon as they start looking a bit limp, yeah. Immediately burn. But what we do is pop it in some ice water and that just brings it back to life again before you do this. Amazing. So ice water firms it up again. Do you get your thin ribbons and then into the ice water one more Brilliant. time to get this beautiful, I call them, let's call them spring onion ribbons instead of curls to make them even more fancy. Oh, gorgeous. So, okay, well now I've got my work cut out for me. Exactly. So <laughs> what we're going to keep on doing now is that's going to keep on cooking for another like minute. We're going to... We're going to stop it and take out the noodles so they don't overcook. Just because it's two-minute noodles, we've got to treat it like proper pasta. Okay. Keep it al dente. Oh. I never thought I'd say al dente with two-minute noodles. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, though, and I'll get, don't be nervous that I'm discussing this with a cleaver in my hand. But right now, though, let's go back to the couch because Danilo is speaking about 
budgets. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, we're back on the couch now with economist Kanti Pai, and we're unpacking the national budget speech from last week. We spoke a little bit earlier on about the different effects that the budget speech has, has on us, um, and we spoke a bit about fuel levies, we spoke about sugar, we spoke about high-income earners. We haven't actually spoken much about the idea of the drought that we've been uh, uh, having. Has government taken that into account when they've prepared their speech? Sure, they have. I think you know, it's one of the biggest uh, things that's happening in our country right yeah. now. And it goes directly affecting us in terms of what we eat and food security and many other things that affect particularly poor people. I mean, mm. I think, you know, the richer people can import their food and mm. they can pay the higher prices, but not so much the poor. And one of the things that was coming out of this whole uh, discussion around taxes and VAT, and people were saying, well, VAT must go up because the government can raise a lot of money there. But yeah. we couldn't really because people are already affected by higher prices. Yeah. So to have higher food prices because of the drought and then to hit them hard on VAT mm. would have been... Um, detrimental, really detrimental yeah. Things. You would have so, forced a lot of people way out of poverty. Absolutely. And mm. the things that they did was to try and bring in a little bit of cash to try and sort of alleviate, particularly the farmers, because mm. the farmers themselves are going through this. These are their businesses that yeah. are going bust because of the drought, because they're not producing, which means they're not selling anything yeah. and therefore not making a lot of money. So it does affect them. And also small-scale farmers mm. where, you know, these are guys who are starting up, they need a little bit of support, so a lot of that money also coming in to so try it and was. help them. Because not know. too long ago on the show we had a conversation around how the drought has actually affected more the subsistence farmers than the small absolutely. farms. And so government has budgeted for a slight relief yes, aid absolutely. for that. They have, they have, and they're looking to do that, yeah. So we like to protect our viewers. You know, we love our viewers so much for being part of the show. And I think one of the biggest things we've seen in our country, especially at the moment, racism and sexism and all that stuff. What about women empowerment programs? Has that sort of been incorporated into the budget speech? Have we started to see more of that, that gender sort of balance starting to happen? There's a critical thing that has to be done, and I think it comes through in various ways, because one of the things that has to happen is to actually fund, you know, the government talks a lot about women's empowerment, but we have to fund it in a way that works. Mm. One of those ways is small business. One of them is actually what we're talking about, Agriculture. Mm. Think about agriculture and that women are starting to participate in agriculture as farmers, as small scale farmers, mm. as cooperatives. So the government is trying as far as it can to put, move in a lot of funding into that space to try and you know uplift women and not just speak about it, but actually properly fund it. So Fantastic. that was actually a great thing to see. That's a huge positive one. Absolutely. I mean, now it's a chance, I think, for a lot of South Africans to, to listen to this interview and to feel like I don't really know if I don't understand what's going on. Are we okay? Me sitting at home at the moment, am I going to be okay? Is our country going to be okay? Where's our economy? Well, I suppose uh, I'm an economist, so I always say one on the other hand. Yeah. Side, but on the one side, really, view. <laughs> absolutely. But on the one side, things are really, really tough. I think we should not yes. underestimate that. Uh, you know, the economy is really not growing. Uh, unemployment is still extremely high, and we are facing all sorts of problems with people that we trade with. We like mm. to think of ourselves as very special, but we're not that special. You know, we are in a global village, and a lot of things that are happening they will affect us. Um, you know, so those things are quite negative, and they're affecting us. And then mm. on the other side, you know, people always say South Africans are resilient. And from our space, we see a lot of young South Africans in particular who are going mm. out there trying different things, trying to, to be productive, ideas, mm. innovation. Mm. And there's a lot of that. And I think we saw some of the money coming in through the budget to say, we want to help entrepreneurs, young people. So that is a positive thing. And I think if we yeah. look to those and we try um, and push, we should be able to see some sort of breathing space. OK, yeah. so that is quite a balanced and sort of, uh, <laughs> yeah, a very balanced sure. view from you, and I understand that. But um, in terms of the way the budget speech is organized, I saw from the SONA as well as the budget speech, et cetera, um, a lot of South Africans might sit at home and feel like it's quite technical, should be actually only broadcast to the experts to unpack it slightly more. And it's turned itself into a bit of a fashion affair or affair to make people say, like, look at me, look at me, I want to be seen. Um, what actual effect does the budget have on the rest <laughs> of our economy? Isn't it more about the implementation? No, it's absolutely about the implementation. I think one of the things that we're seeing in this budget, and I know earlier you were talking about being downgraded and all of these things. So people are looking at those things, but the most important thing is to say, will these things be budgeted? All the mm. positive things I'm mentioning are one thing, but if they don't actually um, come through in implementation, mm. then we are dead in the water. So one big thing that I heard was this idea of underspending, which absolutely makes me so angry to hear that the stuff is happening. I mean, uh, certain departments are being given massive budgets and they're underspending by almost 50% in those sort of things. Why is it that we are under well, over budgeting for that stuff, especially when our economy is such a tight space. Yeah, sure. We're not over budgeting. I think the main issue is that we have a lot of capacity constraints, whether yeah. it's skills, um, whether it's locations, infrastructure, mm. in terms of actually being able to actually do things or good services to people. And that is a huge constraint. And I think a lot of people say, look, there is the money, but to get it down there to people. And then obviously there are all sorts of um, small things that are sort of localized. So if you go mm. to a particular community, it might be difficult because of the political environment or the politics within. Sure. Um, you know, party politics, 
mm. even uh, local politics. And that does affect the way we spend money and how we deliver services. So mm. people are underspending, not so much because you know they want to, but certainly because there are constraints mm. that we are feeling because of, I mean, historical problems, but some of the things that are arising on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. It is a very, very sad thing that should not be allowed to happen <sighs> when there's money, but not being able to so actually roll it out. What happens to that excess money? So, because I know we obviously at the moment are all very worried about our RAND and the sort yeah. of way to interacting with the international markets and things, but what happens to that extra money? Isn't that going to um, deplete the sort of confidence in our markets? Sure. One of the things that has happened with Treasury is to take that money and reallocate it, and so they sort of say readjust and borrow it and say, well, give it back to you once you've built yeah. the capacity to mm. do that. Um, so they'll readjust it and they'll give it to somebody else who actually needs it. So we might use some of that money, for example, to fees okay. must fall, mm. um, to try and sort of, uh, you know, open that space there, and then we'll probably take it back. But the point is that in the long term, we should actually close that gap completely. Okay. We've spoken quite a lot about what government needs to do. We've spoken about infrastructure that needs to happen. Communities need to all come together, and it all comes down to really good leadership that we're going to be needing going into the future, and I suppose that's one of the biggest things. But sure. what about me at home? Is there a way that I can affect the economy in a better way? Absolutely. And I think one of the interesting things is exactly this leadership, right? Um, individuals in their own communities and their own families have to be leaders. Mm. Um, and if you're ignorant, you're not going to be able to do that. And that's why I think people should be going in there and interacting with the budget as far as possible, mm. understanding what's out there so they can follow the money. So if you are listening to the budget <laughs> and you think the money is going to small businesses or it's going to agriculture, perhaps that's an opportunity for you to say, how do I ah. participate in agriculture? If the money is going to the health sector, how do I participate in the health sector? Because the budget does say, you know, we are looking to spend money on the mm. national health mm. insurance. That might be an opportunity for you as a local to say, well, I have some skill, I have some knowledge about the health sector, what do mm. I do to get involved? So, so what kind of budget are they spending on TV presenters? Has that increased? <laughs> Is that where the money's going? I thought that's where it has always been. Okay, going. good. I'm safe. Okay, fantastic. It's good to have you on the show with us today, really to unpack this budget speech. It's a big one. Of course. No, it's been a very, very sure. big thing. It has a lot of anxiety to a lot of people, mm. but at the same time, look, it gives us, I think, for me particularly, mm. some hope that we're doing something. Me too, right. and it's good to have the experts to try and unpack it for us, so we at least we know a little bit about what's going on. So sure. it's an honor to have you on the couch. Thank it's you so much for joining us on the show today. Don't forget, you can still send your comments on Facebook and on Twitter. After the break, we're joined by futurist Darius Yonker to take a steep uh, step further back in and unpack what was said at the 2016 State of the Nation address earlier this month and how it affects you and I at home. Don't go anywhere. Unlock the M Collection. Express yourself. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. We're talking serious matters in the loft today. The 2016 State of the Nation Address was delivered by President Zuma on the 11th of February. Each year, this important speech directly affects all of us. To unpack this year's SONA and help us understand how it will impact South Africa and its people, we're joined again by Darius Yonke. Darius is an international government relations professional and qualified futurist. He has served as a diplomat in the South African Foreign Service, and his work is focused on African development and priorities, leadership development, and international engagement. Welcome to the Love, Darius. Lovely to have you back with us. Thanks for having me. So what is the purpose of SONA and how does it affect us as South Africans? Well, I think we should take a step back and look at what exactly the State of the Nation Address is and why it is there. So our constitution was put in place about 20 years ago and that called for a new structure of parliament. So we have the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. They meet for a year at a time, divided into four terms. So at the beginning of every year, Parliament is opened, and it's opened by the President of the Republic addressing mm -hmm. a joint sitting of the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. That's why we have so much pomp and ceremony and high-level guests. And for the last few years, it's also been held in the evening so that more people can watch it when they're home on television. Right, right. And that's also given it a red carpet, glitzy, yeah, glamorous yeah, affair. Yeah. So just in summary, can you just give us a brief overview of SONA 2016 and the main points that were addressed? Well, this is a very important year politically. It's a local government election year, probably the most important election the ANC is facing wow. in our democracy. Wow. And so the president realizing this, the stakes are high. At the same time, the economic climate that we find ourselves in, what happened after the decision in December to change the Minister of Finance around. Mm. There was a lot of pressure from the business community and the international economy as well. So the president really focused on the state of the national economy, why it's important to avoid the junk rating, and also what to do with the limited resources available. Right, right. Of the issues that were raised, 
which have been critical, like in terms of what people's reaction have been? What are the biggest criticisms around them? Well, they say a week is a long time in politics, and it's yeah, been two and yeah. a half weeks and since and a half the weeks, Sona. So yes. a lot has happened since then. But if we look at the immediate um, conversation after the State of the Nation address, there were a lot of people that felt the president should have spoken more about what happened on university campuses last year and what was happening at the beginning of the year at that time, the Fees Must Fall movement. Where is that money going to come from? Why is it very important to allocate that student funding? Whereas many of those issues were pushed to the budget speech. Um, mm. At the same time, the president really focused on the economy because of its importance, because of its importance to the international markets. Um, the question about why the Minister of Finance was changed in December remained unanswered. Wow. But then he also focused on, at the, especially at the end of his speech, on the importance of social cohesion, of addressing racism, and this was in light of the racist incidents we saw around the festive season last yes, year. Yes, yes, yes. And were there any areas that received emphasis unnecessarily, perhaps? Well, I think some people may have felt he spoke too long about the economy. But at the same time, you must remember he was speaking to a lot of different audiences. He was speaking to the international markets. He was speaking to the local business community. And he was trying to explain to regular South Africans why it's important to avoid the junk bond um, status because right. it makes the cost of living more expensive, it makes borrowing money more expensive, government has less money to do what it needs to do. Yes. So I think in all fairness, it was a good decision to allocate that much time towards it, mm -hmm. but he also suggested that many of the things he wasn't able to touch upon in detail would be discussed the following week yes. at the budget yes. speech. On a positive note, what was applauded and why? Well, Party politics being the way it is in yes. South Africa at the moment, there was still a lot of criticism. We saw what happened before the speech and during the speech. But I think the president was applauded for the way he prioritised the economy. I think uh, he was also applauded for the way he emphasised social cohesion towards the end. Mm -hmm. And also just continuing with ANC policy that has been set for the last 20 years. You know, right. Continuing social welfare spending, continuing spending on public housing, continuing spending on education, all of those things remain in place. Yeah, I, I recently learned that SONA has been the most Googled event <laughs> these past two weeks. How has that affected our economy in the aftermath? Well, in the immediate aftermath, it was received by the markets as quite a stable event. Mm -hmm. um, there weren't too many market fluctuations. And you saw that in the build-up to the budget two weeks later. But now after the budget, in the last few days, the, the RAND's uh, dollar has weakened again. And um, there are some uncertainties, uncertainties in the markets about where is South Africa heading? Why is this policy direction being taken? Where is it going to? Yeah. I mean, we noticed that Parliament was chaotic once again with um, party politics and people interrupting the speech to get demand answers. Is this a healthy discourse that we're undertaking? I think it is. I mean, we're still very new into our democracy, only 22 years. You know, a country like America has been at it for 240 years. Sorry, mm. 340 mm. years. So we've still got a long way to go. And um, these things will happen. In, in some parliaments around the world, you have fistfights breaking out. Wow. We, we haven't had such extreme measures yet, right. and it might happen. And people must remember, politics can be messy. Yeah. And do you think that it was better handled this time as opposed to previous years? I think lessons were learned from last year. Yeah. But at the same time, we are now in a new period of our democracy. There are new voices in parliament. Um, it's business unusual. And so <laughs> yeah. we must be expecting the unexpected going yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. What is your take on Speaker Balega's take on no point of orders? Do you think well, she handled that well? I think she well? was well prepared. Uh, she had a good reason to anticipate what was going to happen. And she took it in her stride. Um, it is a very difficult situation she finds herself in. Uh, she's supported by Tandi Mudisa, the chairman of the mm -hmm, National Council mm -hmm. of Provinces. And mm -hmm. I think they make a good team in, in dealing with a, a very loud and energetic parliament. Yes, yes. And the EFF didn't take too kindly to that. What do you make of the course of action that they're taking? 
Well, I think the EFF is very clear about what it wants and who it is speaking on behalf of. Yeah. Uh, its messaging is very clear, and so the actions are also very clear. Yeah. Um, there are no real surprises. I think what is surprising about the EFF is their consistency. They're staying on message. Um, when they want a big crowd of people, they have a big crowd of people. And um, just their, their general image is, is very well managed and executed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you think it's very positive that it's drawn so many South Africans to, to pay attention now to Parliament when it sits and, and the issues at hand? I think any event in a democracy which gets people to sit up and take notice and become more involved is a good thing. Wow. Yeah, thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. It's very interesting. We could talk forever about this. But you're not going away. We'll chat a bit later as well. After the break, we continue the discussion with our experts. So if you have any questions or, or, or comments, then head over to our Facebook page or tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express, and we could be reading some of it live on air. Don't go away. Skip loves your clothes as much as you do. Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're back on the couch with our experts, Kanti Pai and Darius Yonke, who are unpacking the national budget speech as well as the State of the Nation address from a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's cool to have both exp experts here because one from the Sona and one from the budget speech. Just a comment for both of you guys in terms of the way that it came together. I mean, Darius, you unpacked the sort of Sona. We unpacked the budget speech a little bit earlier on. Did the two match? Yeah. No, I think there was definitely congruency about what the president was trying to say and how Minister Gordon said what was available to do those things. Yeah, sure. I mean, I suppose they have to follow each other in some way, right? So the president gives us the whole big vision and yes. the problems. Although I suppose it didn't go as far as the minister did. You know, his language is slightly softer. I thought the minister was a bit more hard-hitting about the issues. Good. Um, which mm. was great, I suppose, to give us a little yeah. bit more detail. Yeah. But certainly they are. But uh, the promises are being implemented. Is that what we kind of were asking? Yeah. Yeah, well, we have the whole year to see how it gets implemented. Okay. <laughs> and, of course, the constitutional cases um, against the president, does that affect our economy and how it's viewed and I our trajectory going forward? I think the judgment strengthened our country as a whole, that the rule of law is still there, that we've got strong institutions. Yeah, certainly I think one of the things that people are watching is exactly that. Remember um, what happened when the foreign minister got taken out. People lost confidence in this mm. country's ability to do the right thing all the time. And so that court case is good because people are watching and saying, well, maybe these guys know what they're doing. Maybe the law is still there. Maybe, you know, the rule of law is still there. Yeah. So a sure. growing and, one. Uh, uh, a moment that you may have picked up at uh, the State of the Nation just before the president started his speech, one of the last groups of people to walk in with the constitutional court judges. And at that time, there was a lot of singing and a lot of noise in the chamber. And as soon as the judge president and his colleagues walked in, a hushed silence fell upon the room and everybody stood up. Wow. So, sure. uh, definite acknowledgement of the importance of the courts Good. I think in our so. country. Oh, wow. L let's talk a little bit about some of the elements that have been spoken about quite a lot. Because, I mean, as South Africans, I think what we, with social media being around, everyone just jumps on any case that they can yeah, find. Yeah. And a lot of the hot topic has been the two, uh, sort of two, Parliament's kind of discussion. There have been the two ideas of having two different capitals and uh, President Zuma trying to say that he wants to rather have one, one capital. capital. Was that an attempt to try and eliminate the Western Cape or was that not? <laughs> Look, I mean, I think this is a hard topic and I think there are two sides to it. There is a sense, obviously, in our politics that, you know, it's not all nice and dandy and we're not, mm. like, hugging each other. But there must so have been some rational reason. You know I mean? it's, it's expensive. But then at the same time, it's not fun there's no games. doubt that it's very expensive mm. and somebody must do something about that. The decision is to say... But, and also a very waste, time wasting that, you know, ministers have to spend four hours um, yes, coming back and there. forth, mm. uh, you know, traveling. And also, you know, you need two cars on each side of um, the country. Two you houses. need houses. We need, you know what I mean, to maintain both. So I suppose in, in that sense, we certainly need to do something. If we are serious about cutting costs, yeah. that might be one way thing to do it. But at the same time, though, if you think on the other side, it means we have to build a new parliament. That's going to exactly. cost a lot of and money. And we've got other priorities at the yeah. moment. Absolutely. And one of the issue of curbing government expenditure. Well, I think the finance minister made some very clear statements about how it should be curbed, and we'll just have to see how it's implemented. Sure. Well, what were those? I mean, if we weren't concentrating, what were those? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the, some of the usual ones were like cutting down on travel expenditure, cutting down on entertainment mm. expenditure, but he also froze positions, meaning 
government departments can't appoint people to fill vacancies. Mm. And he made a few other measures as well sure. that were trying So if to we see something, the and the, that is part of the, the plan, if we were seeing this still happening, we must keep government accountable towards that. It's actually quite interesting. I mean, he said these things last year about, you know, no parties, no alcohol mm. in government parties. And, oh. you know, there has been a couple of government parties where there's Slip been ups. alcohol. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people are still doing it. So it's about the influence. We're going to watch and see if yeah. this is much stronger this yeah. year as people watch Maybe closely. Maybe it's being smuggled. <laughs> I can see something being smuggled in the kitchen too. Jeannie? Well, if the word budget also makes you break into hives, never fear when Clem is here because two-minute noodles have never looked so good. I mean, just this is outstanding. You've actually put a slice of processed cheese on the two-minute noodles. I mean, I'm, this is delicious. It's just for the malt. But look at it. It's like <laughs> shivering. That's crazy. That is so funny. So... I'm, I'm obsessed with everything you're making here, by the way. <laughs> and I'm a big fan of fine dining. <laughs> So am I, actually. Let's, just, let's, just not, let's not bring it up. Let's not bring it up. Okay. But what I need you to do for me is if you can start with our chilli sauce again. This is just to add a little bit more heat, a little bit more flavour. So Remember what do you mean start with it? What must I, I do? Want, you're going to go crazy. Little zigzags. Just okay. a little bit. Art. We don't want to... It's not too hot. It's, but be arty, yeah, totally. While you're doing that, I'm going to ladle this very classy broth that it took us hours to make. Okay. I'm going to ladle Am I that putting over. a bit too much on? No, you okay. know what? It's... I can just go for it. You go for it. It's for our <laughs> guests. It's for... I'm sure they like a bit Hope of heat. Hope you guys like hot stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then just a spoon the sauce over. What that's going to do is just melt the cheese even more. Oh. And that just makes it even more wow. delectable. So we've actually managed to make a really serious meal out of two-minute noodles. I'm actually impressed. We did well. We did well. Outstanding. Well, you've kind of ruined my design with my little <laughs> I'm hot sorry, sauce, I'll, I'll make but it doesn't matter. The <laughs> there we go. And you can now... Can you show me those awesome spring onions you sliced earlier? It's in the, the bowl oh, over there. Oh, yes. There, here you go. You, you taught can, me how to curl them. You see what I mean? How they've curled over now. Sliced curled onions. There we go. So all they need is... I like how you're doing it with like little tiny fingertips. I'm just going to go grab a pinch. Okay. And like literally, you can see how that's happened. That's, oh, that's crazy. Gorge. Okay, great. Sorry, I'm getting it all over you. Yeah. Swap sides. <laughs> and swap sides. <laughs> While you're doing that, I'm just going to get some limes and just cut a few cheeks out of them. Delish. Okay, well, now, lime, not a budget ingredient, but you could totally use lemon just to add a bit of acidity to it. Yeah. I mean, we just... It's a little... Oh, little... exactly, man. You could have bought lemon juice and that also stays in the fridge forever. Let's not use lemon juice. <laughs> Jeannie, I think you're taking this budget thing to heart. Hey, no, 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 Listen, no. I have never been able to stick to a budget in my life. I'm not about to stop now. Okay. Next okay. ingredient, crispy onions. We're going to add a bit of crunchiness in there. Okay. And you can buy a massive bag of these for like 10 rand. <laughs> <laughs> and then they stay, you can keep them in the freezer as soon as you need to pop them in the oven, crisp them up again. So this is just for crunch and a little bit of extra flavour. I love these little know, crispy onions. Crazy. I throw them on salads, I put them on everything. Well, salads <laughs> basically being the only thing I know how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> so now to make, to, to make this quite authentic, like in a ramen style, make, yeah. they each get a piece a of little egg. Air. A little extra protein, you know, for the whole guys training for the August, you training for the August as well. Uh, can you, you know? believe I'm doing the August? So I'm allowed to eat this today because I'm allowed to carve a load. <laughs> and that's exactly why we're doing it. For all those guys out there that are training and for the budget, the B word, we don't talk about it that much. A <laughs> little bit of luck, oops. And so we've spoken about crazy combinations. I actually want our viewers out there to send us to let us know on Facebook about some of the crazy combinations they've come up with yeah. using two-minute noodles. I am looking forward to seeing what they come up with. Yeah, I actually had a few people already on my Twitter feed sending me things that they used to put into their two-minute noodles. I'm enjoying it. It's Keep crazy. On doing it. It's crazy. I'm actually going to do some of them a little bit later. Now, after the break, we're sharing your interesting uh, leap year stories live on air. So stay right here. We'll be right back after this. Designer fashion accessories by Khartouhan Kutsier. Unlock the M Collection. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas. Because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. 
welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, we're going to take things down a gear and chat about something a little bit lighter. The 29th of February is quite a special day and an interesting day. People who were born on this day can only celebrate their birthdays properly every four years. It's also the day where women are encouraged to propose to men <laughs> instead of the other way around. And it's an all-round crazy day. We joined by Belinda Hubert, whose father actually was born on this very special day, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about his experience. How are you? Fine, thank you. Oh, thank you for coming through. It's so cool to have you here. It's not very often that we get to meet somebody whose father's younger than they are. Yeah, no, for sure. He's only, uh, only 19 today. <laughs> so what, what does that actually mean for your family? How would you celebrate? You know, I think because he was part of a big family, there were actually 19 children. What? Jeez. But the first mom, she had seven, and then the, the, the wife died. And then when his dad got remarried to, to my grandmother, yeah. you know, they were 12 oh my kids, word. and he's number eight. Okay. So I think for them, you know... So no one would remember his birthday anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. But the thing is, you know, we've actually only celebrated his birthday on the 29th. So he's yeah. officially 19. I've called him this, no this morning. He sounds well. He yeah. actually looks young for his age. Oh, man. Um, you know, 76, but... As I said, he really only so, celebrates it on, on the 29th. I, I feel like, obviously, I've only been around for, what, 25 years, and I don't remember there being so much emphasis on leap years. I mean, when exactly was he born, and was there this big emphasis on his birthday being every four years back in the day, or was it always just been I like think this? they've played it low because they were poor, you know, yeah. having this big family, but I think they sort of made gifts. So they made something big every four years for him, and then he just oh, continued so with the, the celebrations. Sure. And um, in our case, we've saved a lot on, on our piggy banks. <laughs> <laughs> but do you pick another day in the year, like the no. 28th no, or the 5th? No, we don't. We've actually really tried. Don't. But, you know, he really only celebrates on the 29th. We've tried to get him here, but, you know, yeah. he's there in, in Barberton doing his things. But I'm sure it it's must be so such a frustrating thing because you know, like, it's not the 29th. So even if you try to on, on the next, uh, the beginning of the next month or the day before, it's still not going to be the 29th. So there's no, that special I thing associated think, with your day. Yeah, but I would still think you're not 19 years old. Yeah. Like, you've lived through you however many years. You keep saying you're 19 still. It doesn't matter. I <laughs> am really 19 years old. <laughs> it must be Could so interesting for, for a family to celebrate <laughs> so often every four years. What about the rest of the family? Do the rest of them all celebrate once a year annually and then he just has to wait an extra three years until his birthday yeah no for sure oh my word. now you know i can't live without my gifts i need to get my gifts and my sister is white and the mother she know how it goes mm. i know is there anyone in your family or perhaps anyone in your family who still could propose to their boyfriends on yes. this day i'm sure <laughs> no, i'm sure <laughs> but um and if, and if you guys are trying to carry on that trend of having sort of uh, these once before your birthday but have carried on this trend of making sure that you have like 12, 19 children each no, thank you. No, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got four. <laughs> that's quite You've enough. got four? Yes. Okay, no, well, listen, that's listen. great. You have that one part. for every year before his birthday. <laughs> yeah. I get it. We've got some social media comments as well. Um, Anusha Biswarman says, Hi, my name is uh, Ashika. Uh, my sister's name is Ashika, and she's turning 40 today. Mm. She still believes she's a little child who insists on a party every four years. <laughs> so we all feel very excited for her as well. Special things happen to special people. Love you lots. Happy birthday. Birthday to you, Ashika, as well. Shame. If you only celebrate every four years, I reckon you've got to go big. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, sure. I would have extravaganzas. Yeah. <laughs> it would be dramatic. What is the biggest part you remember of your father in those four years? Well, you know, you can think if, that there are 19 children. So if you get all the family together, it's huge. I mean, really, yeah. if you go back. So, I mean, it is really enormous. So we do that. Okay. So then, you know, it's a big spoil. Yeah. yeah. You don't even need to invite friends over because yeah. all of your family <laughs> is exactly already there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you, you only get a chance every four years to celebrate your father's birthday. So if you had a special message for him today on his beautiful day, seeing as today is one of the only days we get to celebrate with you, what is your message to your father? Well, you know, he's um, an archaeologist at present, you know, right. a retired person. Mm. And um, he's looking for the Kruger million, so maybe, Dad, come on, get them, and you know, maybe <laughs> we can all celebrate. Oh, but you Kruger millions, fun to have done it. Jenny's available, okay, it's okay. <laughs> Third wife, is he ready for it? Might happen. Yeah, you know, oh he made gosh. a big study, so I hope he'll get a huge 
Yeah, and, and I, I hope, hope he's yeah. watching the show to see you celebrating his life as well. Yeah, yeah. that's very cool. Thank so you so amazing. much. It's so <laughs> cool to have you uh, have you in the couch with us today. And if you're celebrating as well today, a very big happy birthday from us right here on Afternoon Express. We'll do this again in four years' time. Uh, Bonnie, over to you. I mean, have you ever? Speaking of leaps, this is a giant leap for two-minute noodles. Well done, guys. Well done, Clem. <laughs> Clem. <laughs> Please come and join us for some two minute Thank noodles. Thank you. I like that. Well done, Clem. I slaved in that kitchen for hours for you, and that's what you said. I know, to you me. Were just I'm sorry, but Clem did say this was the easiest thing to make. This looks very elaborate. Was it that simple? Yes, very much. Yeah, it's two oh, minute yeah. noodles, didn't yeah. it? But it didn't longer took two minutes. I mean, it looks so <laughs> looks fancy. So delicious, yeah. It really looks so special. Think I fork and stuff on that side. Guys, wonderful having you on the show. I was listening to a lot of your speeches. They don't genuinely put me doing interviews about budgets because. Because you won't be putting too many noodles in her mouth. She'll so have a point to take out of her mouth. <laughs> 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 Guys, yeah, thank you so much for enlightening us today. I just want to find out uh, when the change of the grants will take place is one of the questions that we got online. Uh, it was from one of our fans, Mariette. Yeah. Uh, that will be April uh, at the end uh. of this year. So the budget runs until the end of March, and then everything else kicks in then. Oh, no, just in time for my birthday. Wow. Gee whiz, wow. trust that wow. luck. Wow. Well, now you've Murphy. learned how to Budget. economize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, no. we have to find out, obviously, because with that happening and then in April, I mean, voting is coming up very, very soon. Where should we be keeping our eyes focused? What should we be looking for in terms of the implementation so we know where to put our big cross? Uh, probably, um, you know, I mean, they publish some of these reports all the time and they talk about it, but follow the media because that's where, you know, the journalists are always looking for good stories, yeah. right? Mm. So it's out there all the time. Okay, wow. so keep your eyes on this until the voting starts happening awesome. and then usual Now vote. make sure you join us again tomorrow for Afternoon Express and tune in early because during the first 15 minutes of the show, we're chatting to Dr. Maria Palima, who walked away from her career in medicine and became a best-selling author. And in the kitchen, we're making roasted fig, Greek yogurt, and almond brittle. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. amazing. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Everything's just going to get better and better on this show, so I I'm know. ready to dig in. All right. Thank you Thank so you much so. for joining us. Good <laughs> Thank evening you so much and for happy coming. eating. Bye to all of you. Happy eating. <laughs> happy leap year. Bye. See you in four. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to propose to your boyfriend. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we chat to Dr. Maria Palima, who walked away from her career in medicine and wrote a book about her experience and the state of the South African medical industry. Uh, never feel good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.